hypothesis tested in a one-factor ANOVA is that all the population means are equal. When the null hypothesis is rejected, then all that can be concluded is that at least one population mean is different from at least one other population mean. Recall that the main effect of a variable is the effect of that variable averaging over all levels of the other variables. In this section, we discuss two types of follow-ups to significant main effects, pairwise comparisons and specific comparisons. Here we see the data from an imaginary experiment. Notice that the factor A has three levels and the factor B has two levels. In an analysis of variance of these data, the main effect of A is significant, reflecting the fact that the marginal means of the three levels of A are quite different. The Tukey Honestly Significant Difference HSD, test can be used to test all pairwise comparisons among means in a one-factor ANOVA, as well as comparisons among marginal means in a multi-factor ANOVA. The formula for the equal sample size case is shown here, where MI and MJ are marginal means, MSE is the mean square error from the ANOVA, and N is the number of scores each mean is based upon. The studentized range calculator can find the probability value for a comparison from Q, computed in the formula just shown, and the degrees of freedom error. The two key tests for the imaginary experiment are shown here. The mean for A1 is significantly lower than the mean for A2 and the mean for A3. The means for A2 and A3 are not significantly different. The presence of a significant interaction makes the interpretation of the results more complicated. Since an interaction means that the simple effects are different, the main effect as the mean of the simple effects does not tell the whole story. What follows is a discussion of how to describe interactions and proper and improper uses of simple effects tests. A crucial first step in understanding an interaction is constructing an interaction plot. The plot shown here is for an interaction of the variables outcome and self-esteem. The second step is to describe the interaction in a clear and understandable way. This is often done by describing how the simple effects differ. Since this should be done using as little jargon as possible, the term simple effect need not appear in the description. Here is an example. The difference between the attributions to self following success and attributions to self following failure was larger for high self-esteem subjects, mean difference equals 2.50, than for low self-esteem subjects, mean difference equals negative 2.33. No further analyses are helpful in understanding the interaction, since the interaction means only that the simple effects differ. The interaction significance indicates that the simple effects differ from each other but provides no information about whether they differ from zero. It is not necessary to know whether the simple effects differ from zero in order to understand an interaction. This is because the question of whether simple effects differ from zero has nothing to do with interaction, except that if they are both zero, there is no interaction. It is not uncommon to see research articles in which the authors report that they analyzed simple effects in order to explain the interaction. However, this is not correct since an interaction does not depend on the analysis of the simple effects. That said, there is a reason to test simple effects following a significant interaction. Since an interaction indicates that simple effects differ, it means that the main effects are not general. In the example with outcome and self-esteem, the main effect of outcome is not very informative, and the effect of outcome should be considered separately for high and low self-esteem subjects. Suppose an interaction is significant, but no simple effect is significant. The conclusion should be that the simple effects differ, and that at least one of them is not zero. However, no conclusion should be drawn about which simple effect or effects are or are not zero. A common error is to conclude that two simple effects are different because one is significant and the other is not. Consider the results of a hypothetical experiment in which the researcher hypothesized that addicted people would show a larger increase in brain activity following some treatment than would non-addicted people. 
In other words, the researcher hypothesized that addiction status and treatment would interact. The results shown here are very much in line with the hypothesis. However, the test of the interaction resulted in a probability value of 0.08, a value not quite low enough to be significant at the conventional 0.05 level. The proper conclusion is that the experiment supports the researcher's hypothesis, but not strongly enough to allow a firm conclusion. Unfortunately, the researcher was not satisfied with such a weak conclusion and went on to test the simple effects. It turned out that the effect of treatment was significant for the addicted group, P equals 0.02, but not significant for the non-addicted group, P equals 0.09. The researcher then went on to conclude that since there is an effect of treatment for the addicted group, but not for the non-addicted group, the hypothesis of a greater effect for the former than for the latter group is demonstrated. This is faulty logic, however, since it is based on accepting the null hypothesis that the simple effect of treatment is zero for the non-addicted group just because it is not significant. Mm -hmm.